We now move beyond heats of reaction to consider, uh, I'll say, more tangible thermodynamic outcomes for reactions. And in particular, what we're, we're going to be interested in is the Gibbs energy of reactions. Now, I'll remind you that sort of the hypothetical reaction that we'll be talking about through much of this is this reaction here, where I've been very abstract in calling my reactants A and B and my products C and D. I'll remind you that we'll also use a, a summation index alpha that basically stands for these, uh, these various uh, species in the solution. Now, to start with, we want to express the differential of our Gibbs energy. And I'll remind you that uh, if we're just looking at thermodynamic systems, it would have a form that looks something like this. But uh, this is for a one component system. And when we have multiple components, we then have to include a sum over all of those components of the chemical potential of each component times the differential of the number of moles in that component. All right, where these alphas are, again, all of these reaction species that are taking part in this. Now, I'll remind you that a lot of the reactions that we do, and certainly the ones that we're going to talk about now, are ones that occur at constant temperature and pressure. So when temperature and pressure are constant, then this term is going to disappear, and this term is going to disappear. And that leaves me with a very uh, tidy expression that uh, this uh, Cha this differential change in the Gibbs energy is simply going to be this sum over the chemical potentials times the changes in the number of moles. Now, we also earlier uh, made another approximation, and that was basically to say that the change in the number of moles of the alpha component could be written as the uh, stoichiometric coefficient times a change in a reaction extent parameter, which, I, which is called C, the Greek letter C. So if I use that, then I can also write this as the sum over alpha of mu alpha times the stoichiometric coefficient alpha for alpha times this differential. And since this differential doesn't depend on any of the stuff in here, we can basically exclude it from this and just consider this quantity in parentheses. Now this quantity in parentheses will also define separately as something called delta sub Rg which I mentioned earlier was uh, historically called reaction potential. I don't know if it's called that much anymore, uh, but also historically had a, another symbol, and you may see this in some of the sources that you look at. It had another symbol that looked like this. We're going to stick with this uh, particular symbol for this quantity, and uh, we're going to be very interested in that particular quantity as we move forward. Okay, so let's take a look at that a little bit more. All right, um, when we... Uh, write this for this equation here, this, this species in parentheses could be written as the, as the uh, stoichiometric coefficient for C times its chemical potential times the stoichiometric coefficient for D times its chemical potential, and then minus those same quantities for the reactants. Okay, and I'm writing this out just to show you what this sum actually looks like when we use this plus or minus convention for these stoichiometric coefficients. All right, we're basically going to be saying that when the uh, coefficient is a reactant, we'll set it equal to less than zero. When it is a product, we'll set it either equal to greater than zero. And that way we can write these things as a single sum without having to separate the products from the reactants each, each and every time that we write this out. Now, we're going to consider what this looks like for a gas phase reaction. And in a gas phase reaction, we can write the chemical potential for the alpha component as just a reference value, and I'll talk about that in just a moment, times RT log of P over a reference, put, uh, over a reference pressure, which I'll I'll always choose one bar, and that should be the partial pressure of P for the alpha component of this. All right, this, uh, this is a good general expression. It basically comes from the ideal gas law. So strictly speaking, this is only uh, applicable to ideal gases. Um, but we'll be using this at least for the time being, and then we'll show how non-ideal gases can also be included in our consideration. So what I want to do is I want to take this expression for these um, for these chemical potentials and separate it into or and insert it into this expression for delta delta gr. All right. So what I want to do is write this delta gr now out 
in terms of this expression for the chemical potential. So that means it's going to be the sum over alpha of the stoichiometric coefficients times mu alpha zero plus RT log. And I'm I'm going to omit the one bar. I think what we'll do is just understand when I write a pressure in this context that the pressure must be measured in units of bars. That will make this that will make this argument of the logarithm unitless. Uh, so then it's just a number, and we can and we can evaluate that. All right. So when I write this out this way, notice I've got two terms here, you know, added together. I'm going to separate those terms into separate sums. So I'll have one summation that will basically be the stoichiometric coefficient times the chemical potential uh, for the reference value, uh, plus RT times the sum of the chemical of the stoichiometric coefficient times log of P alpha. All right. Now this thing here. I will define uh, as follows. I'll basically call this delta RG0, and it'll represent sort of a reference Gibbs energy uh, for this reaction mixture. It is specific to this reaction because we are using the stoichiometric coefficients for a particular balanced equation. So this will only, uh, this expression will only good, be good for one reaction at a time. Um, I will also um, want to make use of a property of logs that basically says if I have a times log of x that that's just equal to log of x raised to the a power. So that'll enable me to consolidate this expression just a little bit. Alright, so now when I write this out I'll have one term that is just this, so that'll be delta R G0. So we can think of that as our reference Gibbs energy change. And another term that could be written as RT times the sum over alpha of log P sub alpha raised to its stoichiometric coefficient. Now once again I want to make use of a property of logs and the property of logs I want to use is the property that says that log, log of A plus log of B is going to be equal to log of A times B. Alright, and if I do that for this sum it means that I'm going to multiply all of these uh, all of these arguments of the log together. But remember that some of these coefficients are negative. The ones for the reactants are negative. So when I write that out, I will end up with an expression that looks something like this. I'll have delta RG0 plus RT. And now instead of a sum out here, I'll have the log of a product of terms. And that product of terms will be these quantities, P alpha raised to the v, v alpha power. But this thing now could be written as PC raised to the VC power times P of the D component raised to its stoichiometric coefficient power divided by the reactants A and B. All right, hopefully that's something that's beginning to look familiar to you from your studies of equilibrium and general chemistry. All right, so now what I'll have is a grand expression for this delta RG that looks like this. I'll have this zero term, the reference term, plus RT log of this big old mess, P alpha raised to the V, I'm uh, sorry, PA, uh, PC, I'll get this right sooner or later, raised to the VC power, PD raised to the VD power, PA raised to the VA power, and PB raised to the VB power. And I'm actually going to define this whole stuff here as uh, something else. I'm going to define it as something called the reaction quotient. And hopefully you're familiar with that. And I'm also going to put a subscript on this to indicate that it's a reaction quotient that is calculated using partial pressures of the various reactants and products. All right, one last thing that I want to say about uh, this stuff is the following. What is this quantity here? All right, if we think about what this is, this is this sum up here. So it is adding up all of the reactants and, mine, and I'm sorry, all of the products and subtracting the sum of all of the reactants of their stoichiometric coefficients times their chemical potentials. Now these are all evaluated at under standard conditions, and I've 
should have included the little <laughs> superscript there under my box. Okay, that thing is important because it means that all of those species are present in a concentration in a partial pressure of one bar. So this is sort of the Gibbs energy change I would have if I had an unmixed set of reaction species, both reactants and products, um, present in a quantity of one bar of pressure. The products will uh, will be a uh, will appear as a positive or a, in the numerator, the reactants in the denominator. Um, for this delta G, for this delta G though, they will be products minus reactants. Um, when all of them are at one bar of pressure. So you can think of this as representing basically the um, a, an idealized final state minus an idealized initial state. So it's basically providing us a reference parameter for this reaction change. If you can imagine having a, a set of unmixed uh, ideal gases, all of which have partial pressure one bar, um, and in the initial state it's just the reactants, in the final state it's just the products. Um, but this would represent the reference state that we're going to compare these things against in, uh, for real partial pressures that will end up showing up here in this uh, parameter Q sub P.